in this workshop, we taught you a lot of stuff. We've obviously taught you React, the front end, and we taught you Node Express, the back end. Uh, but we haven't like done that much coding. So I guess one question that you guys might have is like, okay, we know all this stuff, but like I'm sitting down on my computer. I have zero code right now. How do I make a website? Like what, what's, it, what's the first thing I do? How do I actually like go ahead and start building this thing, you know? So that's the question I'm gonna try to answer for you guys today. So first, obviously, if you guys have any questions, we expect like, I would be very surprised if you guys didn't have questions because this is very complicated stuff. So please ask them in the questions doc and Dan and Claire will try to answer them as fast as you can. And also if you just want like a quick React refresher or like a quick guide to like look at while you're watching the lecture, feel free to go to this React guide link. And also the other slides are linked in the questions doc if you want to see those too. Okay, so let's make a web app. I was trying to think of what a web app that we should make. And because I'm very uncreative, I decided we were gonna make Acebook, which is a ripoff of Facebook, but we're gonna try to make it uh, better. Okay, it won't actually be better, but uh, I'll show you what the finished product will look like. It's very simple. Uh, give me a sec. I hope you guys see this. It's basically a uh, web app. I'm gonna log out. So I'm logged out. It says, welcome to Acebook, but it knows that I'm not logged in. So it says you are not logged in. Wow, very cool. Now, when I click the login button, uh, it logs me in and now it shows me all the messages. Uh, if you guys want, I hope it doesn't crash the site, but you can go to this link and maybe make some posts. Let's see if, we can get some discussion going. I'm going to try seeing. I hope you all see this. Oh my God, we got some messages. That's so cool. It's not live updating because it's Facebook. It's just a post. It's not like a chat, but it works. And we're going to make this today. That's very exciting. Okay, so let's dive right in. Okay, so uh, how do you start making a website? I didn't make slides for this, but we had this little doc here uh, that kind of explains how you start making a website from zero code. Uh, and this, this is like the pre-coding part. And I think the way you do this, there's some short link if someone wants to link it in the chat, Clara, Dan, I don't know. but. Uh, the way you do it is you first like draw out the website. So there's just like, there's like different tools such as Figma or other sites. Um, yeah, uh, it is, if a lot of people go on the site, it might break. Uh, that's a good, it's a very like toy example. I didn't do much to it, but it's okay. Um, so yeah, first you design out the site. So you draw out what it's supposed to look like. This is literally just a picture. There's different like tools you can do. You can use paper and pencil. That's one way to do it. I like that way. There's other Microsoft Paint works. Figma is what you probably should use. And then step two is the important part. It's where you divide your site into components. Uh, so let's do that right now. So we have a book and we want to we okay. Suppose we took out our pencil and paper. And we drew this out. And this is what we want to make. So let's divide this into components. So we got app. App is our whole website. Our whole website is one component. Now, we don't want to code everything in one component. That'd be like writing out your whole program in one file. So we're going to split it into different subcomponents. And one subcomponent, well, okay, this will just be an H1 tag. You guys know H1, it's a header in HTML. This will be a login component. I didn't make a box for it, but it has its little button box. So we'll put that in app as well. 
And then Apple also has this component, which we're going to call the new message component. And it's where people put in new messages. That's why we call it the new message component. And then we have all these little messages right here. And we're going to call these the message component. So there'll be tons of different message components. We'll just write a little component for each message and we'll put those in that. And that's it. It's a very short plan, but it's important to do this planning before you code. And now we need to plan out the back end. So remember Dan told you guys about the, the front end, the back end, the client and the server. Well, this is the menu in his analogy. What can users do? What are the things that they can request and get a response back? Well, in this app, if we go back to the app again, there's really only two things that happen when you think about it. The first thing is when you go onto the site, you need to see all of the messages. So basically when they go on the site, you will need to ask the server, hey, give me all the messages so far. And then the server will give you back all the messages. That's one thing. The next thing is you're going to need a way to make a new message. So when they click the post button, it's going to need to take whatever text they wrote and tell the server, hey, add a new message. And then the server will know to add a new message. And that's it. There's only two things on the menu. It's a very small menu, but that's really the only two actions that are clients need to be able to ask the server to do. So yeah, very short front end, very short back end. Simple. Okay, okay. So we're done with the planning. Now let's get into the setup for the coding. I'll warn you guys before this that I do not expect you guys to follow along. In fact, I would be very scared if you were able to follow along because these setup steps are supposed to take a while. So what I think is the best way of doing this is you guys should probably just watch as I do it. And then later when you're actually making your web apps tomorrow, you can come back to this lecture and do stuff at your own pace, like do the installation and then you can like watch the coding parts and code along with me. But I think that will be best rather than trying to follow along as I talk, because I'll go a little bit fast. Okay, so to get started, uh, there's a few things you need. And there's a little guide here uh, on how to install these things. But uh, basically, like some of you guys might have these things already. You need a bash console, that's basically a terminal. I don't know, maybe I should pull up what that looks like. This kind of thing, a little terminal. You guys probably have it. Uh, there's like alternatives on Windows. You need a uh, Node.js version 15. Uh, and to see if you have it, you can type in these commands and it'll give you something. And if you don't have it, there's guides uh, in this link for how to get them. And you also need VS code. And if you don't have that, there's also guides on this link to get that. Um, other things you'll need, uh, like again, please don't do this as I'm talking because then you will be behind because you'll be trying to install things. Um, you also need to make an account on MongoDB because we will uh, need a database for our site. So I guess you don't need this if you don't have a database, but you should, databases are good. So uh, there's instructions here on how to set up Mongo. I can go to them, show you what it looks like. Um, let's see. It basically just walks you step-by-step step through the process of how to make an account. So um, yeah, go to this link, fill out the form. Hit continue, choose the free option, choose this, blah, 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 create a database user. Uh, 
you'll need to set a username and password. Uh, and you have to remember that. This username, this password, you have to remember it. Uh, it'll, I'll mention it again. You need to do this, do that, and get your SRV. Your SRV, your connection string, is important. It will be right here. Again, please don't do this now. This is a later thing. So once you do this, you will have your SRV. That's the important thing from all of this. Uh, the SRV will have bracket username, bracket password or something. You should replace them with your the username you chose and the password you chose. So no like no brackets, just the username and the password. And then this will be like DB name or something, and you want to replace that with your database name, which can be literally anything. So I just call it a test. Uh, I know none of this will make sense because you guys haven't done it yet, but when you're rewatching this, it will make sense. So uh, the second thing you need is a uh, Google client ID because we didn't talk about Google authentication. However, the skeleton code that we're going to give you has Google authentication. So login is always a cool thing to have in a site. And uh, to do that, you will need a client ID. And this link has instructions of how to get your client ID. And once you do that, you will have your client ID. This is an example of a client ID. Perfect. So we did that. Now let's actually do some setup. So I'm just going to read through these steps and then I'm going to show you my, I'm going to do them in front of you. So first, well, I hope you guys have a GitHub account. If you don't, you can make a GitHub account. Uh, first, you make a GitHub repository for the web app. And then you can uh, clone the repository that you created so that you have it on your own computer. Because when you make a repo on GitHub, it's on GitHub. And then to get it on your own computer, you need to clone it from GitHub to get the files locally. Then we have a skeleton. And you're going to copy the files from our skeleton and put them in your own repository. You're going to change a bunch of stuff, blah, blah, blah. OK. So I know that made zero sense. So I'm going to show it to you in action with myself doing it. So let's watch it. OK, pause. I'm in GitHub. This is my GitHub account. I just went to the GitHub website, and I clicked New Repository. Then I typed in the name, Acebook. You can choose whatever name you want. I clicked Create Repository. And then uh, you notice there's this link right here. This is how you clone it. You just copy the link, and then you go to your terminal into whatever folder you want your stuff to be in. And then you type git clone that link. And you can put a name for the folder after it. And it will give you a warning because we literally just created this. So there's actually no files in it. But that's OK. You can have an empty file. Uh, it's OK. We're going to CD into it. By the way, if you don't know like terminal commands, I'm sure it's different on like Windows. Actually, it's probably still CD. But yeah, this is just like navigating folders. So um, yeah, so now we have the files locally. Let's see, what am I doing now? Oh, yes, OK. So now I went to the skeleton. And the link is like here. I'm sure I linked it somewhere. But uh, github.com slash weblab dash workshop slash skeleton. Um, I went to this website. And this is the skeleton code for a React repository. So OK, I need to preface this with there are many ways to start a React project. One of the most common is called create React app. And there are other ways, too. And you can just Google how to start a React project. And there's many different ways to do so. The way that I know how to do it and the way that I learned it is through Web Lab, because I learned web dev through an MIT class called Web Lab. And 
the way we do it is we use their skeleton. So this is their skeleton. And we are just going to download as zip. You see this download zip button? I just clicked code. I click download zip. And it just downloads all the files. And then, as you can see, I open it up in my file explorer. I have all the files from the skeleton. Uh, and then this is very important. There's some hidden files too. So you need to show the hidden files. It's different in like Windows, Mac, Mac, Linux. In Mac, it's like control shift period or something. But you can just Google how to show hidden files and you can find the hidden files. Uh, okay, control shift period, bam. And those are the hidden files. Then I just drag them all over to my Acebook directory that I made earlier from GitHub. And that's, and then I, a little shortcut is you can type code dot in the terminal and it opens up VS code in that folder. And you can see VS code is populated with the correct directory is opening up that folder and I have all the files. And that is how you get started. Uh, there's another extra step uh, in that there's a few things you have to change. For example, you have to change the database name in one file to whatever you set it to. I think we chose test. Uh, you have to change the uh, Mongo connection URL in server.js to the one that you got in the previous slide. And you have to change the client ID in two places with your new client ID. But after you did that, we're all set. And yes, I know I recorded that video yesterday, so it is light theme, but I have switched to dark theme just for you guys, just to make y'all happy. Um, but okay, here I got Acebook open and I have app.js. Uh, hmm, this is not the skeleton code. Oh, no, this is the skeleton code. I'm trolling. Okay. Um, great. So there's an another few things that you have to know. So we did all of this. And then now we want to actually display what we have. So I'm, I opened the terminal in VS Code by going to terminal. Can you still see my screen, by the way? I believe so. OK, so I'm going to go to terminal, new terminal. And then this little thing gets lets me get multiple terminals. And I hope text is big. Oh, no. OK, so what I'm going to do is in an app, we have a front end and a back end, right? So in order to start the front end, we need to type in, okay, before we do anything, actually, we need to install all the required packages. To do that, we type in npm install in a terminal. And it will take a while and it will install. So great, we have installed. And then now, we need to start the front end and start the back end. So to start the front end, we type in a command called npm run hot loader. And it runs the front end on port 5000 on our computer. And then to start the back end, we type in npm start. And it runs the back end on port 3000. So when you guys are coding, all of the backend errors will show up 
in the backend terminal. And all the front end errors will actually show up in your Google Chrome console, which I will show. But now that we did that, uh, we can go to Chrome and we can type in localhost 5000. And our website shows, and that's really exciting. I think if you guys go through all of the setup and get to this point, you should really like pat yourself on the back. Like this is an insane accomplishment getting from setup to this point, because there's so many like bugs that I don't know, it's, it's not easy for sure. So definitely ask a lot of questions. If you're stuck with the setup, uh, feel free to help each other in the discord, uh, maybe some blueprint staff can help you guys as well. But once you get to this point and you see the website, when you go to localhost 5,000, it deserves a celebration. But, um, okay, so now once we did all this, we need to actually code a website because the skeleton is not what we want. Oh, by the way, you can log in too. Isn't that exciting? You can log in on this website and then you can log out too. The button changes, very nice. Perfect. So we remember we do npm run hot loader to start the hot loader, the front end, and we do npm start to start the back end. Okay, so we just did all of the setup and we got from uh, zero code to like a skeleton. And now we need to go from skeleton to actually coding a real web page. So that's the next step. That's probably the exciting part. You know, that's what you guys came here for. You don't care about the setup. You wanna know how to actually make a website. So let's get back to presentation mode. Oh yeah, so first let me explain what the skeleton is. It's from WebLab. So WebLab is an MIT class that me, Claire, and Dan took and also taught this year, um, along with a bunch of other like very accomplished staff. Uh, and we have a lot of lectures at that link. There's it's like a basically two week long version of this crash course. So it's probably a lot more clear and slow and like makes a lot more sense, a lot of examples. We can create like a far better version of Facebook called Catbook, which like has stories, comments, and live chat, not just like messages. And live chat meaning like it's live. You don't have to like, like you can see everyone instantly. Uh, the other thing you have to know about this skeleton is it has Google login and you don't need to worry about that, but the details, if you care, are in auth.js. And there's this thing called sockets, which you definitely don't have to worry about, but, uh, it's there in the skeleton. And if you want to know, you can look at the web lab schedule and sockets are what you use to make live chat or games or any like live interaction on your web page. And it's very exciting. Mija, you definitely don't need the skeleton. There are other ways to get started. Okay, boring stuff is done. Fun stuff begins. Get hyped. Okay. So let's start by thinking about our app. So, um, Facebook. What are the things that we need to store in our database? Well, we have a ton of different users as any app does. We have users and we wanna store them in the database. Uh, and we have messages. We wanna store messages in the database. And those are really the only two things we care about. So um, what we have to do when we use MongoDB is we have to write this thing called a schema. And a schema tells you how the things in the database look like. For example, the message, we need to tell Mongo that the message, the parameters of a message will be a user ID, a name, and the content of the message. And the name being the name of the user who wrote the message. I kind of arbitrarily chose these things. You can choose whatever things you want to have in a message, but it's more of a design choice that you should make when you're planning out your web page. So 
let's go ahead and actually code up those schemas. Um, so I'm gonna go over to the skeleton. First, let me do like a quick like overview of the files. So I hope this is like somewhat uh, visible, but these are basically things that you don't need to worry about now. Um, and then we have our client files and the server files. These are all the extra packages that we install using npm install. Inside the client, we have our components, which are in here. And our components are just in separate files, but we got our app and we got uh, different sub components. And um, in the server, this is the big file that you guys care about. This is where all the router.gets and router.posts are, api.js. And then we also have our models, which are the schemas that we were just talking about. So this is the user schema. And then we need to write a message schema for our app. So the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy the user schema. I'm gonna paste it and I'm gonna rename it to message.js. And I'm just gonna change all instances of user to message. By the way, copy paste is a really great way to write code. Saves a lot of time. And then I'm going to plop in a user ID and name and content. It just so happens that all these are strings. I, if this was a number, I can make it a number. There's other things like array, it's a lot of options. And that's it. Now I told Mongo, I told MongoDB that I have two types of objects in the database, messages and users. Okay. Next step. Let's write the backend methods. So uh, remember, we only have two backend methods, getting all the messages and making a new message. So let's do that. Uh, I'm going to go to api.js. These are just a bunch of like backend methods for logging in, logging out, like get the current user, just the default things that are there all the time. But um, we're going to put ours over here. So I'm going to type in router.get all messages. It's like a menu. We're just adding a menu item to our menu. Another thing that the user can do. And we also want to do a router.post new message. And let's talk about how to write one of these. So um, basically, what we have to do is at the top, we have to first import the model. So we imported user right here. Let's import message. And now we need to make, why did it crash? Oh no, I need to do some live debugging. Ah, uh, I probably made like some sort of parenthesis error. Oh, yes, perfect. You guys are so good at live debugging. Thank you guys. Okay. So we need to get all the messages. And the way we do that, uh, if you guys want uh, a guide on how to write Mongo queries, uh, I can link that in the chat or Claire and Dan can link Mongo snippets, the thing. But um, the way you write a query is you do message.find. And this empty thing right here indicates that there's no parameter. So it gets everything, it gets all the messages 
And then we do a dot then, which I'll explain later if I have time. But the dot then is something for promises. Basically, it waits until this finishes and then does something with the result. So with the messages that I get from this query, I'm just going to send them back. So I'm going to res.send messages. So whenever a client wants to get all the messages, they just have to make a get request to all messages. And they will immediately get back the messages because we send it back to them. All good? Any questions on that? OK. Now let's write the next one. Oh, yes. Okay, yes, I can explain the dot then. So um, this, basically the dot then waits. So it's related to promises, which we didn't really explain. So I'll explain it at the end of the lecture if you have time. But basically it runs this and then it takes the result and passes it into this function once it's done. And then when it's done, it just takes the messages and sends it back. And then for a new message, uh, we need to create a new message and then save it to the database. So the way we do that is we just do let new message equal new message. And inside of here, we just pass in the parameters. So remember a message has a user ID. This is like things we defined. And then it has a name and has content. Okay, so this is this part's a little important. Uh, the way we, uh, so when they make the post request to new message, we want them to pass in the content of the message as a parameter, right? Because otherwise, how do we know what message they want us to post? So we'll just access what they pass in by using the body of the request. Remember Dan said requests can have bodies. So the way we do it is rec.body.content is how we access what they told us in their post requests. The thing is, each request also tells us which user the request was from. The reason that this works is by, because of code that's set up in auth.js, but it's necessary because we don't want them, we don't want them to have to pass in their user ID because then they can pass in a fake user ID and they could pretend to be something else, somebody else. And that would be bad for security. So instead we access their user ID by doing rec.user.underscore ID and name by rec.user.name. I don't think we mentioned the user ID as much, but uh, basically every Mongo object has an ID automatically. And that's what we're accessing with dot ID. And then dot name is just from here, the username. But yeah, once we have this message, the way we save it to the database is just new message.save. And that's it. We just write the whole backend, just this. Isn't that amazing? A whole web apps backend. Uh, the user is whoever is logged in at the moment. So that's from the request. Whenever a request is made, you, can, you are able to tell which user the request is made from. And the code for that is in auth.js which comes with the skeleton, but it's definitely something you don't need to worry about when you're making a web app. Okay, back end done. Let's move on to the front end. So if you remember the front end is basically essentially just app, which is the whole app. So uh, in app, we wanted, uh, okay, this is what we want in the app. We want a login button component because there's a login button at the top. We want our H1 and we want our new message component where we type in a new message. And then we want all of our messages, which we'll use a map to do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a login button component. And the way I'm gonna do that is 
if you remember, the skeleton came with the login button. Uh, so I'm just gonna use that in skeleton.js. I'm going to, how am I gonna do this? Um, give me a sec, let me take a look at the answer key, see how it does it. Uh, yeah, okay, perfect. So I'm just going to delete all this extra text because we don't want that in our site. And then I'm gonna rename this component to login button. I'm gonna delete the CSS, who needs CSS, you know? And then let's rename login button. Oh no, what's the error? Oh, right. So the other thing you guys need to know is in every parent component, you need to import the child component that you use. So that's what we're doing at the top, importing the child components. And, um, now, all we do in app.js is I'm gonna get rid of this code. Uh, let's remember how the site looks like. It's supposed to be, um, if I can pull up the site again, uh, if I can find it. This is what the site's supposed to look like. The login button, the header, new message, the messages. So I'm going to put the login button. And the way you uh, put uh, use a component is it just looks like an HTML tag. So I'm going to put an HTML tag and I'm going to pass in some props. It's just the props that were in the original, were there before, like in the skeleton code, because I don't want to touch the skeleton code. It worked. so. Uh, I'm not trying to mess with that, you know. But yeah, it's just passing in the login and logout functions and passing in the user ID. And the login and logout functions are defined up here, if you're curious. So we put in the login button right here. And then now we want to put our header. Welcome to Acebook. And then let's put in a new message component, which I have not written yet, but uh, we should write it eventually. I don't know why this is here. That's, yeah, that's not supposed to be there. Oh no. This is not written yet. Okay, so let's pretend it's written because we can do that. And for our new message, let's just do this. And for, uh, here, let's add a state, which is the current list of messages. We're gonna store a state of the messages in app. And we're gonna initialize it with an empty array. And eventually when we populate that array, we can use the map function. So we got our list of messages and we're gonna map each of the messages to a message component and each message component, we need to, we want to pass in some props. Uh, what's it complaining about? Oh, that's why. Uh, 
So we're gonna pass in some props. So we're gonna pass in the name of the, of the person whose message it is, and then the content of the message. Because those are the two things we need to display the message, right? The message and the content. Uh, yeah, so this is, this is the whole site. We literally just write the whole site except we just didn't write these components yet. But this is like, like the site will just render this page and then it will render each of the individual components. But this is app.js, it's the full site. So now let's import the correct components. Um, actually, we can write them first before importing. Okay, so I'm going to copy this component, drop it in modules, and uh, just edit from there. So let's call this message, rename to message. Message.js, this will be our message component. Let's get rid of this. Get rid of this and we'll call this message. Get rid of all of this. Perfect. So we got our blank component. Now there's a question, how did we get messages from the database to the messages array again? We didn't do that yet. That's true, we have to do that. I'll do that eventually. Um, so in our message component, I'll make this very simple. We'll just make like it very dry. Let's just return a div. Uh, we're just gonna bold the person's name. So we're gonna bold, and the person's name is from the prop. So we just bold their name. Then we're gonna put a colon and then we're just gonna put the content of the message. Literally the most boring possible formatting, but it's okay, it will do for now. And then let's make a new message component. I just copied the message one and I'm gonna call it new message. And uh, so if you remember, new message is the little, um, let me find it. It's this input box right here. And then this button that says post. So we're gonna need a state and the state will be the text in the box at the given time. Uh, so like if they typed in high, high will be the state of the component. So let's code that up. We need just one state and it'll be content and it's gonna be empty initially. And then um, we don't need a component in mount for this component. And in here, let's return. By the way, this is just like a blank tag it's just a way of doing a blank tag, not, uh, not that interesting. Uh, so let's put in a search box or, or a text box. The way we do that is it's the input tag. And then you can add a value and the value will just be a state of that we just set. And the other thing we need is we need an on change. And the reason is because when they type something, we need to update the state to be what they typed. So the way we do that is on change takes in a function with the event as an input and uh, the, the text is just event.target.value. You guys might've seen this before, but basically this is how you access the new value of the, um, the new value of the 
text box. So once you have that text, we're just going to do a this.set state to set content to be text. Nice. So we did our input box. And now we need a button. So we're going to do a button, uh, button post. That's it. However, this button uh, doesn't do anything because it's just a blank button. So um, you're going to put an on click for the button. And we're going to put in a function inside the on click. So when it, when you click the button, it will run this function. And inside of the function, you want to do a post request. So this is big news, like a post request. We have not done much of this yet. Uh, the way you do it is first, you need to import the post function, which is in the utilities file. So the way you do that is this. This is just a file that came with the skeleton, but it has the post function. And then once you do that, you can make a post request. And the way you make a post request is you just put the root. So if you remember in the back end, we wrote this new message thing right here. So when they click the button, we want to call the new message endpoint. And the way we do that is, and also remember, we need to pass in content as a parameter in the body. So the way we do that is post slash API slash new message, comma, and then the body goes here. So we just pass in content is this dot state dot content. And then after the post happens, you usually want to reset the, the value of the input box to be blank. So something like that. And then that's pretty much it for that component. Uh, we wrote new message, we wrote message. All that's left to do is import them in app. So we're going to go back to app and we're going to import these two components using this line, these two lines of code. These are the five, like this is the path to the component. Um, and then the last thing that I think someone in chat mentioned is uh, we need to actually get the messages from the database because right now it's blank. And the way we do that is in component in mount, we can get make a get request to slash API slash all messages, which is something we wrote in api.js. Remember, we wrote that right here. So we're just using it. It's kind of like ordering off in the menu. We're just ordering off the menu right now because the front end is just the person like ordering stuff, and then the back end is the, is the people in the kitchen and everything. So we order off the menu all of the messages and then we use a dot then. Uh, the dot thens basically the times you use them are whenever you're using a promise and uh, the times that you use a promise are when you use a get or a post and also for any Mongo queries. That's definitely that's like the quickest possible crash course on promises, but you guys can look up promises later. Uh, but yeah, once you have the messages, you just set the state. So this dot set state, we set messages to be the messages we just got back from the database. We can call this like new messages or all messages, and then you can do something like that. And that's pretty much it. I believe that should just work. I'm gonna try to pull up the web page. Uh, this change me right here is really annoying. I'm going to change that change me. Uh, let's change the title. Um, Facebook. But uh, let's see this in action. Whoa. OK, that's a lot of messages. So. Uh, yeah, let's try to make a post. First, I'm going to log in. 
I'm gonna post. So, hi. I hope this works. Post, and I'm gonna refresh. And it works, yay. Okay, so basically that is all I'm gonna show you guys for today. Uh, I'm gonna, let me go back to the slides for a sec. Um, Yeah, so that's basically uh, how you make a full web app. You just write the front end, you write the back end, you write your Mongo schemas, you combine them all together. Obviously, what we made looks very ugly, but uh, you can just use CSS and make it look good. And there's also like little nice things you can do. For example, uh, we didn't code have the page where if you're logged out, it will show you you are not logged in. But that's like a simple thing to do. Or also uh, making it such that you can't make a post when you're not logged in, because currently the site will error out if you try to make a post when you're not logged in, because you need to you need a user, because we refer to the user in the back end. But that's also a quick fix. But uh, if you want to see those quick fixes, um, you can check out the GitHub. Uh, there's two branches. The stylized version is in the styled branch, uh, which is all the stuff that's like actually on the web page. And um, the dry version, which I just coded up, is in the main branch. If you guys want like the quick version. But yeah, I forgot to, that we have to talk about how do you actually put this on the web now? And the way you do that is you use Heroku. So Heroku is a web page. Uh, where you can, I'm gonna go to it right now. It's basically a way that you can take your local sites and deploy them on the web. And the way you do that is you just go to new, create new app, you put in your info, you click create app, uh, test, 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 create app. And then you connect to GitHub by choosing your, finding your GitHub repo name. And after you do that, uh, let's see if I can find something. Facebook, connect. Uh, this, it will work, this won't show up. <laughs> but when it works, there's the deploy button and you can click it and you'll deploy. I think for the hackathon, you do not need to upload it to Heroku. You can just use a local demo. But just in case you want to know how to do it, uh, there's uh, a lot of resources on um, the WebLab website. Uh, there's a whole lecture on how to deploy, and it includes all the little things you have to change to your code in order to deploy it. But yeah, I just want to basically thank you all for coming and sticking through all of the workshops with us. And we hope you have a fun time making your websites and making a website and like even just following through with this lecture and trying to do it yourself. It's really difficult. You'll probably run into a lot of different bugs. So definitely do not be afraid of like asking in the discord, getting like other people to help you, other students, maybe like the blueprint staff, tomorrow. Uh, yeah, but yeah, thanks so much for coming and good luck with your projects.